Hello, this is Shana Kega from the Bonsai Studio, and today we have another episode at the Bonsai Academy. So last time we talked about Largs and Sidua Yamadori, but that was a tree and another goal, and that's a tree that still needs to grow a lot and needs to get more um, uh, refinement over time. This tree already had some had a few years in the running and this tree is now in a refinement stage so that's another goal and that's also an important thing that i want to show you guys so i will tell, tell a little bit about the history of this tree this tree was a yamadori collected in austria by ruth lagas who is a famous yamadori collector from the netherlands and he collects a lot of mugo yamadori and larix yamadori as well so First when a student, because this was a tree of a student, but I purchased it for myself because you don't see that many good Laurex bonsai and this one is quite nice actually. So first he bought this tree, uh, Derek bought this tree from uh, Ruth Lagas and he styled this tree with Thierry Quinchon, who is a Belgian professional as well. And they decided to go for this front. As you can see, the tree is quite nice and has nice movement, but there are, in my opinion, a few problems why I wouldn't use this front. As you can see, you have inverse taper. And taper is very important, so you have to have a very beautiful conicity and movement into the trunk. And as you can see here, the space here is like this, and here it is a little bit bigger. So that's something that I don't like. I can understand why he chose this feature because here you have some deadwood and you have this, these big veins, what makes it uh, kind of special. But it only will get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And you have some nice movement. But in my opinion, also if you can see here, the tree leans to the back as well. So what we have done is we changed the position around in this direction more or less because here we have a beautiful base this is a part that we still need to work on in time but that's something we can do in the future so we have a very beautiful shari with these beautiful veins as well and also the shari is hollow and this is something that's very natural with lowers because they hollow out from uh, the inside and go to the outside this also happens with uh, taxes so this is quite interesting and a nice feature so the tree was bigger as well and we made it more compact this was a branch and if, if you can see Larx is quite apical dominant that's why this became a little already a part of the trunk and became more movement in the tree as well so that's quite important Larx loves humidity a little bit yeah that's why you can see that the bark is a little bit greenish um, if you don't like this uh, you can use vinegar with water and you can get a paintbrush and put it on the bark and the green parts will dissolve or disappear. The important part now to do is this tree is another goal and we need to create more refinement. So we need to study this tree and need to think what or how can we improve this tree because this tr tree is already quite good. I acquired this tree for my, for my own collection from, from Dirk because I quite like it. And if we need to think about these things is when lark starts to develop the branches go a little bit up again so what we need to do is this branch needs to go to this side and then we can start working on the branches and we can try to wire it with as less wire as possible yes but also because they are apical dominant they tend to get quite big as well here so we need to try to pinch this area next spring and the branches that are quite a little bit uh, on the not so thick side we can let one runner shoot to create more thickness yes so that are things that we need to think about also the pot is not really a good pot for this style this is a pot for more or less a cascade type of tree so in future we will also choose for another pot also, another thing is um, when you see larks in, in natural, they have a, a very conical or a, a, a pointy shape of apex. But when you go above the tree line, they will create a more flat or rounded apex. And 
they also they will always tell you to go for like a natural appear but you also do bonsai and bonsai is a little bit putting your own feeling into the tree but also listen to the tree its natural thing or its natural style so with this tree i want to have a bonsai style and not really a natural style and the tree is well on its way and we're going to work on it um, very important what we're going to do now is i will wire this branch with this branch and then i will show you branch per branch what i'm going to cut how i'm, how I'm going to cut and why i will explain you why because it's very important because one day this will grow out and if we cut it back we want to have the same foliage cloud shape again and that's very important with this tree so now we're going to wire the first branch what i always do is i wire the first branch in position and then i'm going to make a branch selection and then i will try to wire it with as less as wire as possible what's very important is this branch went a little bit up again and this branch needs to go down and a little bit to this side so what we will do is this branch i can wire with this branch and when a branch needs to go down we need to wire it from the upper part of that branch also very important is that we need to create tension so when we are going to wire this one ag against the clock then we need to wire this one clockwise yes so we will start here and uh, first we need to make an anchor point and always try to wire 45 degrees or more so now we have this and this looks quite nice okay now we can start wiring this branch and as you can see this branch we wire in the other direction also very important try not to make any holes and try to put on your wire as beautiful as possible what I always will do is I try to wire this wire as far as possible as well Here the wire is getting a little bit thick and we don't have a lot of space so I'm going to use my gin pliers to wire this more beautiful because then we create like a jigsaw system and then we can wire it a little bit better as well. And I always end with the wire up. And this is for a reason that I will show you later. Okay. Now, what I need to do is I need to bend this one to here. So now we can see this is already in a better position. A little bit more down, created more movement and uh, a little bit up because they grow up again so now this one is into a great position this one needs to go a little bit down because i want to make one pad here another one that needs to become bigger in future as well one here to create uh, more depth one here and one here as well so what we can do now is now we're going to make a branch selection and if you can see my branches need to become alternating we have one here that's becoming another foliage cloud then one here 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 and this is alternating so now i'm going to show you how i'm going to cut back the first foliage cloud and then going to wire it with as less as wire as possible 
as you can see, I'm going to start with the first foliage cloud. And what's very important is that uh, we have this hand-shaped foliage cloud. And first, our branches need to go alternating. So when I started with this design, this was going to be a foliage cloud and this one, yes? And then our branches need to be alternating. So you need to have one here, one here, one here, one here, one there, and so on, yes? Then it's very important to cut it back until the end of the shape. And also it's very important to the one that are growing on top to cut them into one or two internoids to create uh, volume, what's very important. As you can see here, with this branch, we're going to start. This one needs to become in the same outer line as the other ones. So this one, for instance, we can cut here and we can wire this one a little bit like this and point it upwards, yes? Then we have this one here and this one here. This one grows up. So and here we have two butts. So this one we can cut here and this one will create volume for the tree. So we have cut these branches into position and into shape. So what I've firstly done is cut back until the outer line. Shoots that were growing up, I've cut back until one or two butts or internoids to create a, a little bit of a volume. And from this one we made, from this first branch we made one and two foliage clouds, yes? If you can see, this is a beautiful foliage cloud, how our larch would develop it in nature. It grows down and it goes a little bit back up again. We created also some movement and also a little bit of movement from right to left and create some curves into it, yes? So we're finished for today with this beautiful large Amadori. As you can see, a beautiful base, beautiful shari over here with some hollow spaces and nice thick veins running over here. Uh, the first thing what we had to do was we had to bend those branches down to create a beautiful elegant image of a Larix who does that in nature as well. Then we had to wire these a little bit and fan those branches out so that we have a beautiful shape as well. In the future this one needs to grow out to get more bigger because this is the first branch. This one as well. And these already got a little bit too big but if these will turn bigger in future, it will not be a very big problem. Um, what now is very important is that some spaces don't have to grow that much and we need to create ramification. So next year when the tree is growing, we need to pinch them when they aren't hard enough yet. So especially around this side, these branches still need to grow a little bit to this side in future. We also need to round the top a little bit more off because now it's quite conical. Here we need to pinch them as well and here as well. And here we can let a runner, one runner shoot to create more thickness into those branches. What we have done is we created a picture frame around the movement with what makes the tree more interesting and more elegant as well. The tree was also repotted in 2019 or 20. And in future, we will repot this probably in this beautiful first-generation Yamaki Japanese pot. This pot isn't attracting too much uh, from the tree because it's quite a simple pot and the tree, tree is dramatic enough. This one will be beautiful and the tree will look a little bit more masculine because of it. Or if you want the tree to look more feminine, it's also possible to have a pot shaped like that and an gray shape to get more contrast with the bark. Thank you very much everyone for watching and see you until the next episode.